<laughs> Welcome to the realm of shadows and whispers, where nightmares come to life. I am your guide through this chilling abyss, and I invite you to step into the darkness with me. But beware, for what you're about to hear is not for the faint of heart. It is not imaginary stories, they are true ones. Now, close your eyes and let the story consume you. Once upon a chilling winter's night in a quaint village in the heart of England, an eerie legend was born. This legend was forged from the ashes of tragedy and whispered in hushed tones around roaring fires and dimly lit taverns. It was the tale of the crying boy painting, a cursed work of art that had a sinister reputation. The painting depicted a young boy with sorrowful eyes, his cheeks streaked with tears as if he were weeping. The boy's eyes followed you, or so the story went. His mournful gaze was said to penetrate your soul, and some claimed they could hear faint cries emanating from the canvas when the room was silent. The legend began with a simple cottage nestled at the end of Elm Street. In that modest home lived the Petersons, a loving couple who had recently purchased the crying boy painting from a local artist, who himself claimed that the tears on the boy's face were genuine. The painting, despite its unsettling presence, soon found its place in the Petersons' living room, or it hung above their fireplace. One frigid evening, a bone-chilling wind held outside as Mr. Peterson stoked the fire. As the flames danced and shadows flickered across the room, he couldn't help but feel an unsettling sense of unease. The boy's eyes seemed to bore into his very soul. Ignoring his unease, he retired to bed. Hours later, he was awoken by the shrill sound of sirens and the acrid stench of smoke. Rushing downstairs, he was met with a horrific sight. The entire room was engulfed in flames, and yet, the crying boy painting hung untouched amidst the inferno. Firefighters arrived and extinguished the blaze, but the house was reduced to a charred skeleton. The Petersons, shaken and bewildered, were convinced that the painting was to blame for their misfortune. They returned it to the artist, who took it back reluctantly, warning them that they may not be the last to suffer. But the curse of the crying boy painting did not end with the Petersons. In the years that followed, a string of house fires plagued the village, each with one eerie commonality. The crying boy painting remained untouched by the flames as if protected by some dark force. Rumors swirled, and the painting's sinister reputation grew. As the legend spread, people began to view the crying boy painting as a cursed relic, a harbinger of doom. Some attempted to destroy it, but their efforts were in vain. The painting remained unscathed, and the fires continued to haunt the village. It wasn't until a determined journalist, Emily Turner, delved into the mystery that some semblance of truth began to emerge. She uncovered a connection between the artist and a series of unsolved mysteries involving missing children. Could the crying boy painting be a malevolent conduit for the lost souls of these children? Emily's investigation led her to a chilling discovery the artist had used a mixture of blood and tears to create the paint for the boy's face. The legend, it seemed, was rooted in macabre reality. Determined to end the curse, Emily embarked on a perilous quest to uncover the truth behind the crying boy painting. What she unearthed was a web of dark secrets, ancient curses, and a malevolent force that had taken root in the village for generations. As the truth was unveiled, the village faced a reckoning with its haunted past. The crying boy painting was finally banished to a place where its cursed influence could harm no one else. But even now, some say that on stormy nights, the mournful cries of the crying boy can still be heard echoing through the village, a chilling reminder of the curse that once gripped their lives, and a warning to all who dare to meddle with the supernatural. And so, 
The legend of the crying boy painting lives on, a testament to the enduring power of darkness and the terrifying mysteries that lurk in the shadows of our world. In the heart of downtown Los Angeles, nestled amid the city's towering skyscrapers, stood the Cecil Hotel, a place cloaked in infamy and darkness. For years, it had been host to a litany of bizarre occurrences, and one of its most chilling mysteries was the enigmatic death of Elisa Lamb. Elisa was a Canadian student with an adventurous spirit. She embarked on a solo journey across the United States in early 2013, and her travels eventually brought her to the notorious Cecil Hotel. On the surface, the hotel seemed like any other budget accommodation for a young traveler, but beneath its facade lurked a shadowy history. As Elisa checked into the hotel on January 26, 2013, she had no inkling of the chilling fate that awaited her. The Cecil Hotel had long been associated with sordid tales of crime, suicide, and unexplained deaths. It was a place where troubled souls often found themselves at the precipice of despair. The mystery began to unravel when Elisa's family became alarmed by her sudden silence. They had been in regular contact with her throughout her journey, but suddenly, all communication ceased. Concerned for her safety, they contacted the Los Angeles Police Department. Detectives were dispatched to the hotel to search for Elisa. The eerie security footage from the hotel's elevator revealed a bewildering sequence of events. In the video, Elisa appeared to be talking to someone, though no one else was visible. She pressed multiple buttons, seemingly trying to escape an unseen pursuer. She looked terrified, her body language erratic, as if she was playing a bizarre game of hide-and-seek with an invisible opponent. Her hands moved in strange, unnatural ways, adding an unsettling element to the footage. The most perplexing part of the video came when Elisa stepped out of the elevator and into the hallway, which was eerily dimly lit. Her actions grew more peculiar. She gestured to the air, as if trying to summon someone or something, and then retreated back into the elevator. Finally, she disappeared entirely. Days turned into weeks as authorities combed through the hotel in a desperate search for Elisa. They searched every room, corridor, and crevice of the Cecil, but there was no sign of her. The rooftop was their last hope. On February 19, 2013, a maintenance worker climbed to the top of the hotel and peered inside one of the large water tanks. There, floating lifelessly in the pitch black water, was the lifeless body of Elisa Lamb. Her death had taken on an even darker dimension as she had seemingly entered a secure tank on her own with no logical explanation for how she could have done so. The autopsy revealed no signs of physical trauma or foul play. Toxicology tests showed no evidence of drugs or alcohol in her system. The circumstances surrounding her death remained as mystifying as ever. The story of Elisa Lamb's inexplicable death at the Cecil Hotel captured the public's imagination and spawned countless theories and speculations. Some believed it was the result of a supernatural encounter within the hotel's haunted walls, while others suspected a sinister human presence. The enigma of Elisa Lamb continues to haunt the halls of the Cecil Hotel and the minds of those who delve into her chilling story. To this day, her death remains a puzzle with no clear solution, an enduring mystery that reminds us of the eerie, unexplained forces that can lurk in the most ordinary of places, ready to claim their unsuspecting victims.